Hello and uh, welcome, gentle students, to our uh, second assignment uh, in class and our first uh, Photoshop-based assignment. Um, so the goal here is we have two photos. Let's just expand this one a little bit. So we have four kids and uh, one of them is looking perhaps a little less joyful than the rest. Um, hint, it's the uh, the younger boy with the shorter boy with the green shirt and the red hair. And if we go to the second candidate of photos, he's got a much softer and kinder expression. But now little sister is looking, you know, just a little horror movie creepy perhaps. So the goal here is how do we combine uh, both photos together into one to one image. So um, of course, after, now these are JPEGs, but so you would always want to process your photos first, make the most of them. Um, <clears throat> but um, once you're done with, with that stage, then comes time for Photoshop. So uh, in the real world, you'd probably be working from two different RAW files, but these are just JPEGs. So now there's a various ways that uh, we can combine these into Photoshop. In the past, I sometimes used Adobe Bridge and uh, we just opened both images in Photoshop and we did a drag and drop and drop and that sort of thing. So that's a little bit unnecessary, especially now that we've got more of the Lightroom front end. So let's do G for grid to display both images. And I'm going to kind of, you know, shift select these two photos so that they're both highlighted. And then I just right click and choose edit. And now you, you might think edit in Photoshop 2020. If you do that, they will open up side by side. So as two separate documents, so that's not what we want. We want to go down a little bit towards right towards the bottom. The option here is open as layers in Photoshop. So we're going to choose that. And Photoshop is going to do a few calculations. It's going to do the, sort of the combining for us. <clears throat> and um, so here we are. We've got our situation here. Let's see if I've set up my, yep. So we've got a two layer document. Now the names of the existing files are what gets transferred to the, um, <clears throat> to the, to the layers palette. Um, so this is kind of providing, in real life, you wouldn't necessarily have these clues, but I've just taken those, taken those extra steps for you when you're following along. So let's zoom out again here. We can toggle the visibility. You can see that there's two very similar looking photos happening here. So now the layers should give us a little clue. Masking exercise dash bottom and dash top. So the order's inverse. So we're going to click and hold on one of these two layers to swap out. And so the masking exercise dash bottom file is going to be our sort of our base working file. Um, so we're essentially, this is going to be our main photo and all we're going to do is replace, uh, the, the young boy's head. Essentially my main approach with, with this kind of work is you just, you try to get away with the minimum, uh, that you can get away with so that the rest of the photo is intact <clears throat> and, uh, you don't get too fancy. You just want to get in and get out. And, uh, in a situation like this, you don't want to draw attention to your fancy work. You don't want your client to ever be aware that this is a hybrid of two photos and so on. So, um, so what we want to do, however, so we're going to be making this layer invisible and then just brush in what we add a mask to it and, and, uh, just brush back in what we need. Um, before we do that, we need to line things up because it's eventually going to be out of sight. And so kind of hard to work with. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of the top layer to about 50%. And I'm going to zoom in with probably just a few command pluses, spacebar drag, and then I make sure I've got the move tool selected. And I am going to <clears throat> kind of normally, if the, the, if the boy's head tilt was the same, we could just use his eyes, but no, he's actually got a different softened angle. So in this case, I'm going to use the sort of the top of his collar. And I can always use my arrow keys a little bit to fine tune. If you find you're getting a kind of a snap effect uh, when you're kind of moving this layer around, you may want to go to your view menu and you'll choose, you'll, you may see snap checked 
for you. And this is a case where we don't want that. It's kind of like a distracting process. But let's just say this is fairly lined up. Okay. We're then going to restore the opacity back to 100%. And then now we're going to add a layer mask to this image. Now, because we only need a small portion um, of the photo, I want the mask to arrive uh, filled with black, i.e. everything has been uh, removed for us. So we could do that by going to the layers menu and choose layer mask and then choose the hide all option. But uh, as I teach along in class, I'm more of a fan of going down to the bottom of my layers palette. So the bottom right here. And before I click the add layer mask button, I just hold on to the option key. So on a PC it would be the alt. And then I left click here and then the mask has arrived filled with black. So this means this entire layer is um, completely invisible. And uh, this is what we want. Okay, so now we are going to just go in with a brush. So B for brush. Um, my general approach here is to use at the magnification that you're at, work with the largest brush you can get away with to kind of just get, you know, the broad strokes done and then move in and fine tune with the smaller brush as you move forward. We always want a soft brush in this instance. So um, just a nice soft round brush here, hardness set to zero. So that's in other words, maximum softness and the radius is up to you. I'm going to start with, um, I'm oh, using my square bracket keys here. Just a larger brush and I'm just going to start painting in and then voila so the wanted head is kind of moving in and so we're covering the bottom with just what we need okay so the problem is however the collars are not kind of lining up so this is where you're gonna have to make a judicious you know a decision of your own as to what you can take to, you know, and so on and what what needs to go I'm going to zoom in again. Again, Photoshop is all about zooming in. So Command Plus brought us one step further. I can view option left click in the mask thumbnail to see how I'm how I'm doing. Option left click to get back out again. The backslash key, so the key right underneath the um, delete key above the return key, shows you this mask view as well to sort of show you. It just give you some some tips as to uh, or some clues rather as to how you're doing. And so if I've got too much going on here, I can just hit the letter X key. While my brush is active now, I've swapped to the black. I can say, nope, I don't need quite so much of the photo. Just enough to line things up. So the shoulder here on the right is um, kind of button in. And I'd be like, oh, hmm, I actually want more on the top photo. So I hit the X again to swap to the color white. So the idea here is I'm going to try and use this collar and blend it into the shirt and um, just not the shoulders. The shoulders are, are what's going to probably interfere with the process. Use the collar again. Can move this in with the arrow keys. Try and line that up a bit better. Always make sure, uh, especially to the beginning student, when you want to be brushing into the mask, make sure the mask is actually what's selected and not say the photo. You may just go like, I'm brushing in here, nothing's happening. And that's because you're brushing in the photo rather than the actual thumbnail. So always be aware of that. Okay, and then where were we? So I've had to do a little course correction with the alignment here, so no problem. These are real world problems. No solution is perfect. Ideally, we have the perfect family photo right from the start, but you know, working with kids doesn't always work out that way. Even working with adults with their eyes blinking and things like that. Always look for ghost images. No double pockets and double seams and things like that. And then kind of have a zoom out and then let's toggle our visibility. 
Okay, so I can see things could probably do with a little bit more of a lining up. Okay, so we pick and choose what we need. Always with a soft brush to get better, <clears throat> better blending. Backslash key. Okay, so this tells me I was using too much of the top photo. I'm going to graze along. Which here, oops, that was a mistake. Let's command Z that a couple of times. Let's polish that up and then split the difference. Let's blur the lines a bit at the, yeah, okay. Just large soft brush to get those blends in. Okay, that's pretty good. So this is kind of showing you the editing decisions I've made. It's a really large soft contour around the head where it's blending into the background. And then things get, you know, more fiddly <clears throat> um, as, we, as we kind of move down. Again, look for double images. And then what I like to do also, so option left click, back in my mask and then look for streaks so streaks like you can see kind of here this is like areas of partial translucency that the eye will probably not pick up but too many of these streaks kind of going across like, like this large field of white here you may end up with like a third eye a third nostril or just some unwanted like a piece of an eyebrow or something so it's always kind of good to review your work afterwards in this mode as well and that looks like about it. Let's do command zero. Okay. Always do this kind of thing and go, do I see anything wonky? Remember the goal in this particular uh, exercise is you have to fool yourself. So, um, which is very hard because you know exactly what's going on, but if you can kind of fool yourself and not see anything weird, your client's not going to see anything weird as, as well, or your intended audience. Okay, so now we have four smiling kids. Everybody looking at the camera, and things are generally better and just a little bit more. The mood is the mood has become aligned. So, and so of course this is uh, this will be a Photoshop file. So you'll always want to go file well, as save as. Okay, and this is where you would put your last name, first name, assignment two, and that sort of thing. And then this is what you submit to your teacher. Okay, so let's cancel that. And uh, that's it for now. And I uh, hope this was achievable for you. And um, yeah, I will stop talking now. Bye.